And finally, among our capitalization in the, uh, capitalization uh, capital budgeting tools, we have the profitability index. Now, when we the NPV and the profitability index and the IRR are all very closely related. Here's my NPV is going to be equal to you know cash flow at time zero plus cash flow one over one plus R to the one plus bah, 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 all of the other cash flows three dots over cash flow in this case cash flow five that one over one plus R to the fifth right and so this is uh, this is this cash flow here and this subset here is this whole subset of cash flows here right and so this is this isn't particularly new stuff but the profitability index is going to give us a better idea of what one looks like compared to the other and what we're going to do is we're going to separate these cash flows right through here okay so you already know how to do the NPV and we're going to take the cash this cash flow and we're going to put it down here as a denominator above the other one or below the other one so in essence what we're doing is we're creating a ratio this is going to be the present value of my future cash flows cash flows divided by my initial investment and my initial investment is also known as cash flow zero okay so let me scroll this up let me write it out again actually I'll keep it right about there so my profitability index is equal to nothing more than the present value of my future cash flows divided by my initial investment. This is also known as cash flow zero. All right, and so that's not going to be particularly difficult, except that I need to compare this one guy against all of these all in the same time period. So let's uh, let's write them down again. All right, I've got my negative 250, and then I have 30. Is it 35? I think it's 35. It is. Let me scroll this up to the top. There we go. Where am I? 35, 80, uh, 120, 160, and 175. I think it's 130. Uh, it is 130. One. 30. Okay, now we're ready. Okay, and so basically what's going to happen here is I'm going to look at cash flow zero and I'm going to hold it. And I'm going to take cash flow 35 and I'm going to discount it back to time period zero. And I'm going to take 80 back to time period zero and 130 back to time period zero and 160 down to time period zero and 170 back to time period zero. I'm going to take all of these, but I'm going to keep these separate. And I'm going to look at just this present value and I'm going to put it on the top of my denominator, right? Present value of cash flows 1 through cash flows 5 over my 250. And the 250 is going to go on the bottom, right? That's cash flow 0, which in this case is 250. And that's an absolute value. It's not a negative. It's an absolute value. And so what's that going to look like? That's going to look like, um, well, let's talk about how we calculate it real quick. We calculate it. Oh man. Why does this happen? We're gonna calculate, we're gonna calculate the uh, cash flow streams. Note that I'm starting at time period one and I'm going to time period zero. Right, because this is one, two, three, and I go all the way to number five. One, two, three, four, and five. I'm going to take these guys, and in my calculator, I'm going to do my net present value. If I'm in the TI-80 as an example, I'm going to do net present value of whatever. Let's use 18% because it's what we've been using in other equations as 18%. But like I did at the beginning of this class, my initial investment is going to be zero. Okay, And then I type in my cash flows, 35, 80, et cetera, 175. And I close it up. So this is my equation for figuring out the denominator on top for my TI-80 folks. And on the bottom, I only do 250. Please, please note that this 
makes this calculation a calculation of just the future cash flows. If I'm just doing the NPV, if I'm doing the net present value for the entire thing, I'm going to do the 250 or minus 250 plus the discounted rate of all the present values. 1 plus R to the 1 plus dot 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 plus 1, whatever the last one is, 75, 1 plus R to the fifth, where R is 18 in this case, and I add them all together, okay? Note that this is not going to be the case here. I'm going to take this, this, let me use yellow. I'm going to, I'm not adding these together. I'm taking the 250 and I'm putting it on the bottom. And the way I do that in the numerator on top is to calculate it with a zero initial investment, okay? That may sound a little tricky, but it shouldn't, it, it, uh, with a little bit of practice, it shouldn't be. Please remember that the NPV of the project is not what I'm going for. I'm looking for the NPV of the future of the future payments or the future values or the future cash flows, not the initial investment. Or without the initial investment. Okay? So if I'm following, if you want to follow me in the book, this is uh, negative 250 and 35, 80, 130, 160, and 175. If I discount these guys back, I get 29.7 and 57.5, let's go back up, and the next one is 79.1, and 82.5, and 76.5, right? This one is that one, this one is that one, this one is that one, and I add these up. Note that I'm adding these up without the 250. I'm just adding up the present value of the future cash flows. And that adds up to, you know what, we might as well, we're going to use it. Let's might as well bring our calculator up. There it is. So 29.7 plus 57.5 plus 79.1 plus 82.5 plus 76.5 equals to 325.30. So this is 325.3. So the 325 goes on top, 0.3, and I divide by my initial investment. What's my initial investment? Let's go back to yellow. My initial investment is 250. The 250 goes on the bottom. And this should equal to, I think it's 1.3. Let me double check that. Well, I can do it real easily if I go back to my calculator, right? 325.3 divided by 250 absolute value is 1.3. So this is going to be 1.3. And 1.3 is my profitability index. All right? This can seem a little confusing. Just remember that on top I have the present value or net present value of the future cash flows. And on the bottom I have the initial investment. And the most important thing about this is that this guy is without cash flow zero, which is the same as saying without the initial investment. That's it. The only other thing that we want to take advantage of here is that we're going to accept those projects that have a PI greater than 1.0. Is 1.3 greater than 1.0? Yes. Therefore, we go ahead and accept the project. And so b before we finish this, let's run a quick example. Let's, let's go back to here. And, uh, and uh, I know this is messy, but here's our cash flows at time period zero, time period one, time period two, three, four, and five. And let's go ahead and use our calculator. 
payments per year is 1.0, 1.3. Okay, everything looks good. Let's clear that out. And let's look at our cash flows. So my cash flow thing comes up on yours, it might not. And the first one, my initial cash flow, since I'm just calculating the numerator here, I'm going to put zero for my initial cash flow. And my second cash flow, or my first cash flow technically is going to be 35. I'm going to do that once. And I'm going to add, can I add a bunch of these already? 80, tap over one time. And then 130, 130, one time. And then 160, one time. And finally, 175, whoops, 175, one time. And you'll notice up here on the screen that I have zero for my initial value. That's exactly what I want, okay? So I go back to uneven cash flows. I type 18% for my interest, and I calculate NPV, which is right here. Shift, NPV, and I get 32, 325.26, which is exactly what I got doing it by hand. And I divide that number by my initial investment to 50, and it gives me that 1.3, that profitability of 1.3 that we just talked about before. The most important part here is that if I look at my cash flows, I have, since I'm doing the numerator, now remember, I'm doing the net present value, not of the entire project, but just of the future cash flows, then I have zero as my initial cash flow when I do them in one at a time, okay? If I ask you for the net present value of the entire cash flow, obviously, you would include the initial. But when I use the profitability, remember that, let me find it, let me find where I put it up here somewhere. Remember that I am using the present value of just the future cash flows only without the initial investment. Okay? That's something you're gonna need to practice to make sure you don't get confused. And uh, hopefully hopefully you guys will will uh, will get that. I would definitely be prepared to do any of the five of these on your exam. Good luck. See you soon.